Oh, so I just wanted to say, uh, I'm sorry for the poor lighting on that first video. I will definitely start doing these videos during the daytime, and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep up with these videos. Uh, I'm not really sure if they're useful to anybody. Um, they seem almost kind of silly to me, but all I'm doing is reviewing my notes. Um, I don't plan on putting Romanji in any of the videos. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to put Furigana in. I said the first video was kind of like this trial video and I didn't put any Furigana. But I'm going to go ahead and put captions even on the ones I do put Furigana just in case you can't read my handwriting. I apologize for that. It's, it's kind of awkward to hold the camera and to <laughs> write at the One same time. Two. Sentence order. So I'm going to read something to you and I can't remember what source it came from. I think it was probably from Tay Kim's Grammatical Guide. But it says, the real order of a fundamental sentence is a verb. Anything else that comes before the verb doesn't have to come in any particular order and nothing more than the verb is required to make a complete sentence. In addition, the verb must always come at the end of the sentence. That's the whole point of even having particles, so that they can identify what grammatical function a word serves no matter where it is in the sentence. So that's just kind of interesting and you want to think about it like that. So like when you're putting words together and sentences, they don't really have any particular order. So for example, we have... Uh, this one they switched it around a little bit. Where you could just say bento o tabeta or tabeta. Obviously at the end it just means I ate um, the bento. And this one just says I ate. Ugh. When you look at the three classes of verbs, you're going to conjugate. The group one is the oo verbs, group two is the do verbs, and the group three is the irregular verbs. If you look at a hiragana chart, you'll see the line um, a, i, u, e, o. So it's good to have this chart in your notes somewhere. So we are, we are going to conjugate the polite form, or the moss form. <coughs> so. All the verbs start out u, dictionary form. That's where they all start out, right in the middle. Now, if you need to conjugate it up to the moss form, all of the endings will go up to e, and then you add moss. So if it ends in mu, it's me. If it ends in boo, it's b. If it ends in u, like it's two. e. All you do is you drop the do, drop the do, add moss. Pretty easy. This one's the easiest one, and then we have our irregulars in type 3. So we have, you just have to really remember these. So sudu becomes shimas, kudu becomes kimas. You just have to memorize and those. And you'll use mas form, or even the stem of the mas form, which is the conjugation right before you add mas. You'll use that in a lot of like final sentence ending um, patterns or conjugations, so or other conjugations. So it's always good to know how to do moss form. I think it's probably the very first conjugation that any textbook will teach you. Make it easy to see. So, for example, you take aso bu. Bu is a U verb, so the U is going to go up into the E line. What comes before Bu is B. So if you think about it in the hiragana chart, so it would be Aso B, Aso B, and then add Mas. Aso B Mas. Okay. Sorry. Matsu. Matsu. Okay, so to conjugate it, you're going to go in the line with su, ta, chi, tsu, de, to, and in the E line is chi. So, ma, chi, 
Mas. Machimas. So this is only for u verbs that you're going to go up and down that that hiragana chart when and you conjugate. have. Oh, <laughs> okiru. Now okiru. <clears throat> okiru is a do verb that when you conjugate it, it's okimas. If you know it's okimas and not okidimas, then you know that this is a do verb. It's a type two. So that's just how I've kind of learned how to tell the difference is just to learn the mas form on most of them. But you can use the other tip where if, it, if the sound preceding it ends in a, u, or o, it's a u verb, and e or e is a do verb, and with a few exceptions. Do. So this one is ha, hashiru, hashiru. This one has a proceeding of e, but it is a, um, it's a u verb. So it's not going to be, even though it ends in do, it's not going to be hashimas. So the, the do is going to go up in the hiragana line to d, and then add mas, hashirimas, kaeru. So this is the same thing. It's one of those exceptions um, where even though it's do, it's a u verb. So, kae. You can read it kae du. Du verb will conjugate up to di mas, just like the one above it. Kae di mas. This one used to always confuse me because I used to always get it mixed up. But it is. Uh, I'm sorry for me. I need to write these bigger so you can see the details. This one is nemas. Nemas to sleep. I used to always think it was a u verb, but it is a do verb. So it's just ne mas. So group two, all you do is you slice off that do, add mas. It's easy. It's the easiest of all of the conjugations. So nemas. Okimas. Those are do verbs. You just slice off that last do, add mas. Really simple. The u verbs, sometimes they take a little bit of getting used to, but they are also very simple. Do verbs, you go up to the e line and write down the character, add mas. So, aso bimas, machimas, hashidimas, kae dimas. So you have those, and then you have, of course, group three is sudo. It completely changes to shimas. You'll see shimas this to do. And then we have kuru. Kuru changes completely to same, same character kimas. So a lot of times you'll still see this um, kanji. All you do to figure out how to pronounce it is look at what comes after it. The do, it's a ku. If it's mas, it's ki. And then later it'll be pronounced as kol. So you just have to keep that in mind. It's probably one of the first conjugations you're going to learn because textbooks build on each other. And a lot of times they need you to get it in stem form. Stem form is easy to get. So stem form of also be mas is also be machi mas machi, and then ki di. You just take off the mas. So, I mean that's stem form. You know, <clears throat> agyo, kagyo, uh, sagyo, tagyo, nagyo. Hagyo, magyo, yagyo, nagyo, and wagyo, I guess, I suppose. But that's just the lines. That's what they call them. But you just go through, like I said, you go the hiragana, the E line for mas. So everything starts out here at the do line. 
And then, you know, the, the tsu goes up to chi, su goes to shi, fu to he, mu to mi, du to di. So it just goes up one line, ad mas. It's pretty simple. And you have a dan, i dan, u dan, e dan, o dan. So that's just the row. And then the column is the gyo. Gyo. Um, so here's kind of a quick look at my notes. And either from multiple sources. Getting really good lighting. So it's like I said, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do like these sort of review videos or I'm reviewing all of these grammar points that I have currently learned because I do need to go over them again because I am slowly forgetting them. And then I can make these videos that maybe that might help someone else. And also in the process I review my notes. Um, I'm also using other computer programs such as Anki to help with vocabulary and some grammar. And then I'm using a program called Memrise also to help with my grammar and reviewing it. But, I mean, it helps, sure, but it's been a long time since I've been through and reviewed my notebook. It's just a quick overview. I've started to date them. I didn't do that when I first started writing it. And I like doing loose leaf and things like this where I can continue to add on. A lot of times like, you, like the textbooks will build on each other and they may not introduce certain points until later on in the book. So I can always add on to the page or I can slip in a page protector and, and um, with notes in it, you know, with little, little notes if I learned something new. Because at first I had the spiral notebook and it didn't work very well because everything was, I, I wrote it in order of the textbook and, and then I kept trying to add more onto each page and it got too messy, too cluttered. Uh, I wish I had a picture on my very first notebook. I ended up recycling it already because I was stupid and thought, oh, I can write everything in Kana. And I can write everything in Kana and not have any spaces. So I could not read my notes. So unfortunately, my first notebook was a bust. Just make sure that if you do write your notes in Kana, which is perfectly fine, you leave spaces between the words. So someday when you go back through to reread read your notes or rewrite them, then you'll be able to read them and understand them. Yep, I was not very smart. I didn't realize that the spaces were there for a reason. I just wanted to write only in Japanese. I only wanted to just, you know, practice my kana. And uh, it didn't work out so well. So I did lose a lot of notes. I don't know how many times... I had to rewrite my first notebook. But then eventually I was like, why don't I just grab a notebook and put them in the page protectors. And the notebooks get kind of heavy. And then some notes are very short. So I thought, well, let's just get loose leaf and put them on those. I do have reinforced loose leaf paper. I don't want to lose my notes. Oh yeah, and with my second attempt at my notebook, I did the... Uh, erasable pens, which I found out. I still have some of those notes, actually. I put them in page protectors now. But if you rub them hard enough, you can actually remove the notes. That's very useful to know. So, I only use my erasable pens with homework and practice work. I do not use them for notes. 
because it wears off and when you're left with pieces of your notes missing, that's not good. So, See, there's not really any sort of order to this. The only thing is there's uh, particles at the end. Loose leaves are hard to turn. There's particles at the end. Here's particles. They're still kind of out of order, so I do need to go through, and as I read them, I will be putting them in a better order. Maybe put, like, dividers in here so I can find them easier. So, it's like I said, this isn't just from Genki, this is from a whole bunch of sources. Um, and I just put them all in one notebook, because it's easier. Oh, here are the erasable notes. So these are saved. So I had to put them in page protector, because, like I said, these pens... I love the pens. I hate writing with pencil. Um, I don't like the sound or the feeling of it. If I do, I have my mechanical pencil, the only one I use. But these, um, if you rub hard enough, you can actually get the words to come off. Um, but I love the pens. I love them. But they're not good for notes. Oh, cool. It leveled up. See it? Had the same night as last night. Not much sleep. Going over the moss form. The moss form, I go. The moss. So you're gonna conjugate differently for the three. <coughs> you're gonna conjugate. You're gonna conjugate differently. Ah, like, can you take a moment? <laughs> All right. Ma. Ma. Oh, wow. If I can write. I had another word in my head. And we have. Oki Moss. Oh, sorry. Oh, gosh. Line. That do go up into the. That do. Holly. Can't talk. Thank you for that update. <laughs>